I love you so much. I would love to take you on a date. <laughs> Thank you for taking care of my car. <laughs> you hate the camera. I am stoked that this thing is not in fact a giant piece of shit. Anything else you'd like to tell my, the fans of this car? No, I'll just get out of here. Okay, all right, goodbye. <laughs>wondering why I'm driving the Ferrari F430 in the middle of winter time when it's like 20 degrees outside. First off, it just stopped raining. But second off, it's because this car has to actually get ready to do something besides sit still. Now, when we talked last, we talked about the glory of being the winter car. We talked about the S2000 hopefully being the track car, which means this thing needs to be a pretty decent show car. But it's gonna be on a TV show in February and I need it to get around a track without falling apart. There's a couple things we need to do to make that happen because although every Everybody thinks that this car is somehow like the perfect embodiment of a Ferrari F430. I want to be very, very clear. It's not. It's the bottom side of a middle school desk. Okay, this thing has been through hell and back. This car is absolutely wild in terms of what it came from and where it went to go to actually be able to drive. So let me give you a little history lesson about this car. First things first, this car was a junkyard find. It got loaded up onto a trailer using a forklift. This thing was probably the exact opposite of what you'd expect a 430 to come from. And if that doesn't make matters worse, it didn't run, it had coolant in the transmission, it was spaghetti red, and it was terrible. The inside was this really off-putting like orangish leather brown that probably looked cool back in 2007. Um, but in 2020, it looked like complete dog water. It looked terrible. And now we're here two and a half years later. And if you look inside, the interior is nice. We've got this whole thing changed around. We partnered with Paradise Stitch Co, which was awesome. We got a whole lot of stuff put back in it. We got the car to actually run, work, turn, etc. But this thing is still a massive pain in my ass. And I know every single time I go out on the internet and I post this car and people don't know like me or know this car like, oh my God, it must be so nice having this car, oh, rich kid alert, rich kid. I bought this car for the same price as a new Toyota Camry, okay? And I bought this thing sight unseen, which I would not recommend because the amount of money that I've put into this car just to get it up and operating is nothing short of a second or third potential Datsun. It's been terrible. Now it is fun, but that means if I wanna get this thing rocking and rolling for a racetrack event in February, which by the way, apparently this is gonna be in an Amazon TV show, I gotta go talk to my friend over at Classic Mechanics and Motion Products to make sure that the engine is good. Because one of the few things that we haven't been able to really kind of nail down yet, even though we've owned it for a few years, is it has a little bit of an ignition issue every once in a while. I know, shocking. It's not consistent though. Like right now, it's perfect, but if we want it to be good on race day, we gotta make sure that everything is going okay. It burns a little bit of coolant, but most Ferraris and 430s will do that. So, we're gonna take it to Motion Products, we're gonna get a leak down test done, because we just wanna make sure that everything on the top side, the head gaskets and stuff, are fine. If those are fine and we're experiencing a little bit of a misfire issue, then we're gonna go through, change the spark plugs, change the ignition coils if we have to, and get all that sort of stuff done, because we wanna make sure that when we go to the Las Vegas Speedway, we get all that stuff done, that it doesn't actually and immediately blow up. I don't think I'm gonna win this competition, but I do want the car to be ready. In terms of if I wanted to add more problems to the list, the rear air airs up super slow, which means I gotta sit here awkwardly and wait for the light to eventually tell me that there's a thrown air coat in my back rear bags because for some reason the back doesn't air up that fast. This car is the opposite of perfect. This car is a pain in my ass but at the end of the day it is still a car that i love look look at this this is the shit i'm talking about okay people talk about how awesome and perfect their builds are no 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 this one was put together like i get through life Eh, close enough hi blair Hello. did you miss me no did you miss this car no where do you want me to park Get out right here and <laughs> my guys will park it. Okay.
Thank you for taking care of my car. <laughs> you hate the camera. <laughs> you don't even have to look at the camera, you can just look at me. Um, everything's good. Everything was good? Yeah. Uh, just your overflow cap was good. Oh. So it was like 20 bucks or so. That's super great to yeah. hear and not a head gasket because if it was a head gasket, we would have just sold the car. How much is a head gasket replacement on that? Well, you'd refresh the head. Yeah. So, I mean, 6,000, 8,000? We're not doing that. That's a whole ass Honda S2000. So we did new spark plugs in it. Your plugs looked original. Okay. Um, fix the trunk. Thank you. And the light on the dash. <gasps> and fix your driver door. I love you. <laughs> I adore you. I adore you. I love you so much. I would love to take you on a date. <laughs> awesome. So here's the thing. This is Blair. Blair actually worked on the car originally. Then worked on the car again. again. Then he worked on the car again. a third time. He's try. He's literally left places that I used to try and bug him at, and then when he goes to a new spot, you want to guess what follows him? The car you built. Yes. Half built, three quarter built, kind of built, kind of. You get like partial ownership, I think, yeah. in that one yeah. specifically. But ever since it was pretty much when we got it, when we got it and it was spaghetti red. To now, Blair has worked on it, has helped work on it. Unfortunately, and when it comes down to actually figuring out what's wrong with these cars, you sometimes do need to partner with somebody that hangs, you know, race cars upside down in their lobby. Because unfortunately, that's not something that I could do in my garage. And I don't think Blair would trust me. Would you trust me doing what you did in my garage? No, <laughs> <laughs> what's wild is that this is in Appleton. So I know this might be normal in like California or places like that, but to have a place like this, like look at this sim rig. Look at this, is so neat. It's so unique, it's so fun, it's so different. Blair's been such a massive help on the 430, mostly because getting into the actual ECU is near impossible without the actual system that they have here. So when I brought it here, it was not essentially, that one's mine. It wasn't essentially because like I didn't want to do it. It's because when you start playing in the engines, Every once in a while, at least with the 430, the ECU does have a tendency to kind of freak out. So I wanted to make sure that it would get done right, especially since this thing's gonna need to race around a track in Las Vegas. I really want the screw up, if there's gonna be a screw up, to be because of my driving and nothing else. But I dream of a day, hold on, I'll show you. I dream of a day where one day, one day when you come into the garage or into a shop, maybe this year because of one of the goals, that I have a Ferrari panel hanging up. That's just so cool. Yeah, the local uh, car spotters really liked that the last time we did that. <laughs> I would say it sounds different, but it doesn't. But I'm excited to drive it and see what happens. Anything else you'd like to tell my, the fans of this car? No, I'll just get out of here. Okay, all right, goodbye. <laughs> so we are feeling good. This is very exciting. That is great news to hear. Honestly, I was a little scared that there was gonna be way more issue with the car. And turns out there's not. All we've got left to really kind of figure out with this thing is gonna be the air suspension. Cause we still got some lines and stuff that are kind of hanging out in places that they probably shouldn't. We also got to make sure that when we're on full acceleration with turning, especially with like braking, late apexes, stuff like that. If we start playing around with the, how the car moves with the air being up, that we don't run into an actual clearance issue or rubbing issue. Because if we are gonna run around a track, I really want to make sure that we've got tire clearance. Oh driving this car is like sex. I don't know if I'm supposed to say that on the internet, but like, oh, it just does something to you. So we heard that the spark plugs were within like a few hundred thousandths of adjustment, which means that even though they were the original spark plugs, they were still relatively in decent shape. We got those replaced. We got them regaps. We got brand new spark plugs in here. We did a leak down test. They checked the leak down test on the cylinders for over an hour a piece, which is awesome. It tells us that there's nothing wrong with the head gasket. And what we really think is the biggest cause of any sort of coolant burn that was happening with the car 
didn't have to do with any sort of head gasket issue or coolant coming out of places it shouldn't or even burning the coolant. It has to do with the fact that it probably was a bad coolant cap and that the coolant cap had a bad gasket in it. When the gasket got hot and when the tank started to actually get pressurized, it was squeezing coolant out of the actual cap and it was spraying onto the muffler. And then when the muffler was at temperature, obviously it burned, causing a lot of that coolant smell. So I am stoked that this thing is not in fact a giant piece of shit. This is another, just like a big win for me that this car is slowly but surely getting better every single time. So on the next episode of the 430, hopefully you guys are excited as I am. What I plan on doing, yanking these wheels off, checking the actual fitment, seeing how much clearance I actually need to move around with the air suspension so that when we run it at the track, when we race against these cars for banging gears, that we're good to go. And then outside of that, probably cleaning up a couple things here and there. I'd like to get some of this, whatever shaky noise is coming out on this side. And maybe, just maybe, if we still have time at the end of it, get some speakers in this thing. This is the noise I'm talking about. What is that? It's like my 3000 GT all over again. So thank you guys so much for watching. Just remember we got a Discord channel as well in the description below. Hope you guys enjoy. Drop a comment. Please, please, please talk to each other because that's the biggest thing that I want for 2023 is for everybody to just interact with each other. So I'm Alex, Alex Martini with two underscores on Instagram. Today we talked about cars and I'm so excited to get behind the wheel of this thing yet again and in better shape than it was before. Thank you to Motion Products. I'm seriously in all right now and i just can't wait turn green so i can go the speed limit please